hello, and welcome back to Spell's Classroom. Today in class, we're going to be talking about weather and climate. We'll be talking about the differences between the two and some things that affect weather and things that affect climate. We'll also be talking about the different types of climate around the world. So I hope that you enjoy today's lesson. So what we're going to do again is we're going to talk about all the factors that affect the weather, climate, and then we will discuss things that affect Earth's weather and climate, and, you know, kind of talk a little bit about those things. So, I hope that you enjoy. So, weather is temporary. It's a, a temporary behavior of the atmosphere. So, it's what's going on at a certain time. It's a small geographic area, and it can change rapidly. So, the study of weather is called meteorology, which I'm going to do another video that focuses a little bit more in depth on that. But the study of weather is called meteorology. And someone who studies weather is called a meteorologist. So climate is different than weather because climate is long-term behavior of atmosphere. So it's usually 100 plus years and it's a large geographic area and it's very slow to change. So just to kind of recap that, weather is temporary, small, geographic area and can change rapidly. Climate is long-term behavior of atmosphere, so 100 plus years. It also is a large geographic area and it's very slow to change. So another thing we're going to talk about today is climatology, which is the study of Earth's climate and the factors that affect past, present, and future climatic changes. So when you think about that, you're going to want to think about the normals, so standard values for a location. And the average values over a long period of time will help you understand climate. So there are some factors that affect weather and climate. And does anyone know what those are? The sun. So actually, let's do a little adding here. So these are some things that affect weather and climate, and someone already said sun, which produces heat. Anything else? Water cycle, which we will talk about. Anything else? Atmosphere. Ice. So 
few more things. Mm -hmm. Fan forms. And mm -hmm. so the attitude. lines go horizontally, longitude lines go up and down. And so, depending on where you are on the earth, these would be your latitude lines. There's a lot more of them, but depending on where you are, it's going to have a different, you know, it's going to affect the weather climate, or the longitude lines, which go up and down. It's going to affect the sun affect weather and climate? We mentioned that was one of the ways. Um, so what do you think? Okay, so the sun produces heat, so it's going to warm the atmosphere and oceans, um, which is going to cause wind, ocean currents, temperature changes, things like that. Um, it also creates climate zones, so the tropics, temperate, polar, and it keeps the water cycle going. So it affects the weather patterns as well. So that's, the sun is a really big influence on weather and climate. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the water cycle. So if we've got some, we're just going to start here with some clouds. And we're going to make a little lake here. And we're going to do a little ocean and river here. We're going to talk about condensation, precipitation, um, transpiration, and kind of how those things run together. So the first part that we're going to talk about is we're going to do some little lines here. And it's coming up from the ocean, and we've got the water here. And they're going to the clouds. And that could come from the ocean, the lake, or the river, or any type of water form. But this is called evaporation. So it's from the water, rises, and it's going up into the sky. So it's evaporation, and you've probably all seen this, is just when a liquid changes to a gas. So it's gaining energy from the sun in order to do that. So this is evaporation. So that's the first part. And then transpiration is evaporation of water out of plants. Um, so that would be if, let's say we had some trees here. You don't hear a lot about this one as much, but let's say we've got some trees here. It's the evaporation from plants that go up. So it doesn't always come from a water source. It can also come from plants as well. So that would be right here. If we've got these plants, we've got trans. 
evaporation, which is when the water is going up and changing into a gas. Okay, so the next part that we're going to talk about here, we've got this cloud, and on that cloud I'm going to write condensation. So, condensation is water going from a gas to a liquid. So, this happens when the water cools or loses energy. So, when this happens in the atmosphere, clouds are forming. So, it's going to evaporate either from the water, it could be an ocean, lake, river, anything like that. And it's evaporating from a liquid to a gas. And then eventually that gas is going to turn into a water, which is condensation. And when that happens, it's cooling down and losing energy. Okay. So the other part of this is precipitation. So once the cloud gets so much water, the water is going to fall out of the atmosphere. And this forms when the water droplets and clouds become too heavy to stay up in the sky. So if it's raining, we call that precipitation. So these will be our little precipitation circles here. Okay. All right, so there are different types of precipitation. So with precipitation, we have liquid water, which is rain. Also, you can have frozen water, snow, sleet, or hail as well. Um, so we know that the sun can affect weather and climate. We also know that the water cycle can affect weather and climate. The atmosphere also can as well. So the atmosphere is a mixture of gases that surrounds the earth. So it has five different layers. Each, you know, has different properties. So temperature and pressure change within the atmosphere levels. So if you're having um, less pressure as the altitude is increasing, it's going to affect the pressure. So the atmosphere also has air masses, which are just a body of air with a certain temperature and moisture level, so this can be warm or cold, and it can contain a lot of moisture or not a lot of moisture. So when we think about this, we call them fronts. So fronts are where air masses meet. So there's four types we've got. So fronts are just air masses, um, and we have four different types. So we've got a cold front, we also have a warm front, we have also a lunid and a stationary. So each kind can bring different kinds of weather. So these are the four types, and that's going to affect the weather. So now that we've talked about fronts, we're also going to talk a little bit about um, air pressure and how it affects weather. So how much the Earth's atmosphere is pressing down on us is measured with a barometer. If it changes, then new weather is on the way. So falling air pressure, which is low pressure, is associated with warm air rising. Okay. 
and while they're coming, um, rising air pressure is usually stormy weathers. So when you've got low pressure, the warm air is rising, and it's typically seen with kind of stormy weather coming. Rising air pressure, which is high pressure, is usually associated with cold air sinking. Um, usually fair weather is coming, and then steady air pressure is associated with no change in, in the future. So, I'm going to go ahead and go over that again. So, we've got low pressure, and that's going to mean that the warm air is rising. So when you think about that water cycle, that um, it's going to kind of lead to the water turning into gas. It's getting more heat, more energy to go up. So the warm air is rising, which is leading to storms or stormy weather. And then high pressure is so when you measure that, that's kind of how you can tell what the weather will be. So high pressure, once again, is rising air pressure. And what that means is cold air is sinking. So that's going to mean that you're going to get fair weather. You're not going to have storms. And then if the pressure stays the same, there's no, you know, change coming. So that's kind of how you know, looking at those fronts, looking at low and high pressure, or, you know, no change, can kind of help predict the weather. So, another thing that we're going to talk about today are winds. So, winds are created from differences in air pressure. It moves from areas of high pressure to low pressure. And the greater the difference in pressure, the faster the wind blows. So, it's measured with wind vanes, um, or you can estimate with the Beaufort wind scale. So global winds, um, so thousands of kilometers long, can cause weather to move in different directions. So examples of that would be you know, a jet stream, things like that. Um, also, global winds are caused by the temperature difference in different regions. So a hot tropical region, you know, is going to cause air to rise. Whereas cold polar regions cause air to sink, so when those kind of interact, it's going to cause more wind. And it's also affected by earth spin, so which causes winds to curve to the right in the north hemisphere and to the left in the south hemisphere. So it's a little bit about winds and the air pressure. The next thing that we're going to talk about is ocean and how that affects weather. So ocean currents affect the temperature of the land they pass by. So cold ocean currents are usually a cooling effect, and warm ocean currents are usually a warming effect. It makes sense. Um, temperature changes affect pressure, which then creates winds. Winds blow this cooling or warming effect over the land, and ocean currents distribute heat from the equator to the poles. So another thing that affects weather is ice. So ice in the Arctic is white, and so it reflects almost all of the sunlight that hits it. So this reflection of the sun is what keeps the Arctic regions 
cold because the sun's rays never reach the surface to heat it. In other words, ice keeps the earth from getting too warm and changes in snow and ice cover affect air and surface temperatures. So less ice means warmer air and surface. Another thing that can affect um, weather and climate are the landscapes. So mountains can affect the climate of an area. So since mountains act as a barrier to air movements and moisture, um, such as rain clouds, one side of a mountain may be desert-like, while the other receives lots of rain and is lush with vegetation. So cultural re regions as well, so areas near water are warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. Um, so this is because seasonal changes affect oceans more slowly than land. Um, therefore, oceans heat up and more, you know, they heat up more slowly and warmer and produce cooler temperatures. So likewise, oceans um, cool down more slowly in the winter and produce warmer temperatures more likely in the winter. So latitude is another thing that can affect climate. So if I were to draw Kind of just a circle here, and then we've got up here we have the Arctic Circle, and then below the Arctic Circle we have the Tropic of Cancer, and these are not perfect, and then we've got the Equator line, which divides the Earth. And then below the equator, we have the Tropic of Capricorn. And then below that, we have the Antarctic Circle. Okay. So, Thinking about all of these, that's going to affect, you know, the amount of direct sun rays that each area is getting and how the Earth revolves around the sun, depending on where it is in the 365 days that it's revolving. It's going to change, you know, the weather and affect, you know, the climate. So, when we think about this as well, so we're going to kind of separate those into the different... Climates now, so I'm going to do the same circle here. And then here we have kind of the polar climates up north, and then also down here. So they've got similar climates. And then above the polar, if this was the earth, we've got temperate. And then also below the polar, we've got temperate which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. So temperate, and then here we've got the tropics and tropics. So it's kind of expected. With that, so what that means is these regions are kind of have the same climate, these ones have the same similar climate, and then these two areas have the similar climate. Okay. So, tropics are the warmest because they're getting the most direct sun rays. So this is the equator, that's the line that gets the most direct sun rays. Um, and then temperate are warmer summers and colder winters. So temperate. It's kind of mild temperatures. And then polar is the coldest because it's receiving the least direct sun rays. So, that's kind of how it is affecting that climate and also can affect the weather as well. 
So another thing that can affect climate are having you know trees and plants that which are supplying air supply and things like that, removing carbon dioxide from the earth. Um, but that is all that I have um, about modern climate. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and thank you for watching. I will see you next time.